Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. Now really, we're dealing with the limit of a function. And that function is essentially f of x equals sine x over x, where x can be any non-zero real number. Now, by definition of the limit of a function, to say the limit as x squared to 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1 means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0, such that for all x in the domain of our function, so for all non-zero numbers x, if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 0 is less than delta, then the absolute value of sine x over x minus 1 is less than epsilon. Now, in proving this theorem, we are going to be appealing directly to the definition of a limit. And also, we are going to be using a function which we have proven a lot of properties about. And that function is the arctangent function. Our definition of it was as follows. Let x be any real number and consider the following sequence. Well then, we have proven that the sequence 2 to the n xn converges. And we defined the value that this sequence converges to to be the arctangent of x. And so, for example, if x is equal to 0, then this is just going to be a constant sequence of zeros. And therefore, 2 to the n xn will be a constant sequence of zeros, so the arctangent of 0 is just going to be equal to 0. Now, some properties of the arctangent function that we have proven was that the arctangent function is a strictly increasing function. We've also proven the following inequalities. If x is any positive real number, well then x over the square root of 1 plus x squared is less than arctangent of x, which is less than x. And if x is less than 0, then the inequalities just get reversed. Now notice, if x is greater than 0, and we divide x on all three sides of this inequality, well then we get this. Now if x is less than 0, and we divide x on all three sides of this inequality, well since x is negative, that's going to flip the sign of the blue inequalities, and so we're going to get exactly what we have here as well. But really, this means if x is a non-zero real number, then this inequality is true. But then, we know that 1 plus x squared is greater than 1. So then, if we take the square root of 1 plus x squared, it's going to lie between these two values. So then, if we take the reciprocal of both sides, that's going to flip the sign of this inequality. So we get this. So, 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared is greater than 1 over 1 plus x squared. So this shows if x is any non-zero real number, well then 1 over 1 plus x squared is less than r tangent x over x, which is less than 1. Now we've also proven that r tangent is an odd function. So r tangent of negative x is equal to negative r tangent of x for all real numbers x. And using the fact that r tangent is an odd function, we've shown that the absolute value of r tangent of x is equal to r tangent of absolute value of x. We've also proven that the arctangent function is bounded. And we defined pi over 2 to be the least upper bound of the arctangent function. We've also proven if x is any positive real number, then arctangent of x is positive. And from this definition of pi and this fact, it immediately follows that pi is positive. Because if we consider any positive real number, say 3, well then, our tangent of 3 is greater than 0, for example. But pi over 2 is the least upper bound of the arctangent function. So pi over 2 must be greater than or equal to every output value of the arctangent function. So in particular, pi over 2 would have to be greater than or equal to our tangent of 3, right? My definition of upper bound. So this shows pi over 2 is greater than 0. So multiplying 2 to the other side, that tells us pi 
is greater than zero. And also, from this definition, and using the fact that arctangent is an odd function, we saw that negative pi over 2 is the greatest lower bound of the arctangent function. And we've also proven that the arctangent function is a function from the real numbers to the open interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Right, so if you give me any real number x, well then the arctangent of x will belong to the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2. In fact, we also proved that the arctangent function maps onto the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2. What that means is, if you give me any real number y in the open interval negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2, well then, there must exist some real number r such that y is equal to the arctangent of r. Another property about pi that we have proven is that the arctangent of 1 is equal to pi over 4. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the arctangent function. Now, where does the sine function come into play? Well, we actually define the sine function using the exponential function. And what we've been using for the exponential function is the following. For each complex number z, e to the z is the limit of the sequence 1 plus z over n to the power of n. And we've proven a lot of properties of the exponential function as well, but using the exponential function, we defined the sine function and the cosine function. But as for the sine function, we have for each complex number z, the sine of z is just e to the i z minus e to the negative i z over 2i. Right, so this is where we started with the sine function. In fact, we've proven that the sine of any real number is a real number. But also, we proved a property which combines the sine function and the arctangent function. We have for all real numbers x, sine of 2 arctangent x is equal to 2x over 1 plus x squared. Okay, so now let's get into proving this limit. Now we're trying to prove this limit from the definition. So let's first give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And from here, we're going to take delta to be the following value. We're going to take delta to be the smaller of pi over 2 and 2 times the arctangent of epsilon. Now, of course, pi over 2 is positive, but also, since epsilon is positive, well then, according to this result, it follows that arctangent of epsilon is positive. So delta is the smaller of two positive numbers, so certainly our choice of delta is positive. So this is a valid choice for delta. Now, with this choice of delta, we're going to show for all non-zero real numbers x, if 0 is less than absolute value of x minus 0 is less than delta, then absolute value of sine x over x minus 1 is less than epsilon. So to prove this, let's give ourselves an arbitrary non-zero real number x, and we'll suppose 0 is less than absolute value of x minus 0 is less than delta. Now, I guess this looks nicer if we just write absolute value of x, so I'm just going to rewrite this as absolute value of x. Now the whole goal is to show absolute value of sine x over x minus 1 is less than epsilon. Or in other words, we're going to show sine x over x minus 1 lies between negative epsilon and positive epsilon. Now, since absolute value of x is less than delta, and delta is less than or equal to pi over 2, that tells us absolute value of x is less than pi over 2. And that's the same thing as saying x lies between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So if we divide 2 on all three sides, we get negative pi over 4 is less than x over 2 is less than pi over 4. So x over 2 lies between negative pi over 4 and pi over 4. So certainly x over 2 lies between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So x over 2 belongs to this open interval. But since arctangent maps onto the open interval negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, well then x over 2 must be equal to the arctangent of some real number. And I'll call that real number p. Now, the arctangent of 1 is equal to pi over 4. And using the fact that arctangent is an odd function, this immediately implies arctangent of negative 1 is equal to negative pi over 4. So since negative pi over 4 is less than x over 2 is less than pi over 2, this is really saying arctangent of negative 1 is less than 
arctangent of P, which is less than arctangent of 1. But then, since arctangent is a strictly increasing function, this should imply that negative 1 is less than P is less than 1. This must be the case, because what goes wrong if we instead have P is greater than or equal to 1? Well, on one hand, if P is equal to 1, then arctangent of P is equal to arctangent of 1. But that contradicts the fact that arctangent of P is less than arctangent of 1. Okay, so then what goes wrong if P is greater than 1? Well, since arctangent is strictly increasing, that would imply arctangent of P is greater than arctangent of 1, contradicting the fact that arctangent of P is less than arctangent of 1. So the only possibility left is that P is less than 1. Right? And similarly, P must be greater than negative 1 as well. That's why this inequality is true. Now, absolute value of x is less than delta, and delta is less than or equal to 2 arctangent of epsilon. So then, why is this going to be nice for us? Well, since x over 2 is equal to arctangent of p, that tells us if we multiply 2 to the other side, we have x is equal to 2 arctangent of p. Now, of course, we can pull the 2 outside of the absolute values, and according to this result, this is just going to be 2 times the arctangent of absolute value of p. So this shows 2 arctangent of absolute value of p is less than 2 arctangent of epsilon. So since arctangent is a strictly increasing function, this means we must have absolute value of p is less than epsilon. Now, since p lies between negative 1 and 1, well, that tells us absolute value of p is less than 1. And the absolute value of any real number is greater than or equal to 0. But the claim is absolute value of p is strictly greater than 0. Because what goes wrong if absolute value of p is equal to 0? If absolute value of p is equal to 0, well, that implies p is equal to 0. But if p is equal to 0, then we have x over 2 equal to arctangent of 0, which is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to 0. But that contradicts the fact that x is non-zero. So yeah, we must have as value of p strictly greater than zero. So, since as value of p lies between zero and one, well, if we multiply as value of p by itself, that's only going to make it smaller. So we get this. But as value of p squared is equal to p squared. And if we divide p squared by a number bigger than one, that's only going to make it smaller. So in particular, if we divide p squared by 1 plus p squared, that's going to make it smaller. So we have this. And acid value of p is less than epsilon, so I'm just going to write acid value of p less than epsilon. So we have these inequalities. So taking delta to be less than or equal to 2 arctangent of epsilon leads us to having p squared over 1 plus p squared is less than epsilon. And this is going to be useful in showing sine x over x minus 1 lies between negative epsilon and positive epsilon. And now, let's show that. Now, if we take this equation, multiply to the other side, we have x equals 2 arctangent of p. So we have this. But then, according to this result, sine of 2 arctangent of p is just 2p over 1 plus p squared. And notice the 2s are going to cancel out, so if we regroup this, we get this. So to show that sine x over x minus 1 lies between negative epsilon and positive epsilon, we just have to show that this guy lies between negative epsilon and positive epsilon. Now notice, Now, if we go to this inequality and take x to be p, well, then we have 1 over 1 plus p squared is less than arctangent of p over p, which is less than 1. Now, focusing on the left-hand inequality, if we take the reciprocal of both sides, we get 1 plus p squared is greater than p over the arctangent of p. So, going over here, if we replace p over arctangent of p with 1 plus p squared, well, then this guy must be less than this guy, but this is just equal to zero. 
and zero is less than epsilon. So we have made this guy less than epsilon. Now, let's show that this guy is greater than negative epsilon. And to do that, well, according to the right-hand inequality, if we take the reciprocal of both sides, we have p over r tangent of p is greater than 1. But taking p over r tangent of p, replacing with 1, we have that this guy must be bigger than 1 over 1 plus p squared minus 1. And if we combine these guys into a single fraction, we get this. But the numerator is actually just equal to negative p squared. So this is just negative p squared over 1 plus p squared. But since p squared over 1 plus p squared is less than epsilon, if we negate both sides, we get negative p squared over 1 plus p squared is greater than negative epsilon. So really, this thing is greater than negative epsilon. So this shows that this quantity lies between negative epsilon and positive epsilon. But since this quantity is equal to sine x over x minus 1, we have sine x over x minus 1 lies between negative epsilon and epsilon. But that's the same thing as saying S value sine x over x minus 1 is less than epsilon. And so we're done. We have proven this statement, which proves that this limit is true. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.